what an improvement Toyota did with the new Toyota Prius. This is the 2024 model year. This specific one is the base prime model. It still has 220 horsepower in combination with the internal combustion engine and the electric motors. What are we gonna do in this video though? I think this has so much potential. So what I wanna do is redesign the front end and the rear end, take some parts from the new Toyota Supra, splash it on here and see what that could look like. We're also gonna go into detail of front end design, the side, the rear and the interior before we take this for a drive. Now, before we jump into the actual review of the Toyota Prius, let's go a little crazy here and redesign both the front end and the rear end uh, design of the Prius. Because as I said, I think this has so much potential to look like a proper sports car. And the thing is, when you take this for a drive and you realize just how sporty of a driving experience this new Prius is, it, it, it just makes more sense to have a more aggressive sort of version of the Toyota Prius. So what I'm doing here is taking the uh, front end or the front bumper from a Toyota Supra, redesigning it a little bit. I don't, I've never been a fan of those fins in the middle of the new Supra. So I remove those, just have a big, nice grill at the bottom. I think that looks clean and also more in line with the overall design language of the new Prius. And as I said, it has the surfacing of this new car. It's a completely different car and design DNA than any previous uh, Prius. It feels like Toyota said to themselves, okay, let's make this a proper good looking car because they have a lot of competition now in the EV space. EVs don't necessarily all look ugly these days like they used to do so i think toyota had that in mind when they designed the new uh, prius adding the uh, a small little chamfer underneath the headlight there and also the supra wheels onto this wheels can either make or break a design and that goes for this car as well with a 195 millimeter wide tires front and rear on the prius it looks a little thin, almost like small bicycle tires. So of course we need to plant it properly on the ground. Now looking at the rear end here, this is where it gets interesting because I'm taking the diffuser from the Toyota Supra. Again, I think if we just dig around in the Toyota parts spring, we can create something really unique with this design. And I'm not sure if this would, would be possible to build in real life. It would be very hard to make a redesign like this in real life. But using Toyota parts, I think that uh, has a clearer connection to uh, the previous design than taking it from any other car. Of course, adding, as I talked about, adding some width to the rear tires. And here we are. I'm going to show you now the before and after, after I add this side skirt to the rear view as well. So you can see the differences. And I do think just add, specifically the wheels and tires, huge change for this Prius. And it shows just the potential of what the new Prius has. Let's do a quick walk around of the new Toyota Prius. First of all, the wheels, these needs to go immediately. This is only for the base version. You definitely want to go XSE because if you pick that, you're going to get the beautiful 19 inch wheels. The overall design though, I think we can all agree that this is a huge, massive improvement over the previous Prius. This actually looks very sporty. There are a couple of lines here though. For example, this roof line, when you sit inside of it, you can see just how tight it is right where you have your head. More on that when we go for a drive later on. And there was also a couple of things in the interior that I'm not a huge fan of, and that has to do specifically with the gauge cluster. But starting with the exterior design, I think it looks fantastic. It has this SF90 style in the front end. So we have the same type of styling here, if you look at the new uh, Ferrari SF90, it feels like they took a lot of inspiration from that car. But before we go into more detail on the design, let's pop the hood and let's see what we have powering this new Prius. As I said, we got 220 horsepower, no matter what trim you're choosing. We do have a two liter inline four, as I said, 220 horsepower with a 10.9 kilowatt hour battery pack. It is connected to a CVT gearbox and zero to 60 is 6.7 seconds in a Prius. That's not bad at all. Top speed limited to 112 miles per hour. Fuel economy comes in at 53 city, 51 highway. And you can go full electric range is about 40 miles before the internal combustion engine kicks in. And the base price for this is around $34,070. 
dollars. In the interior, you do have a seven inch gauge cluster and an eight inch infotainment screen. We're gonna talk more about that and what I think about that layout that we have later on when we jump into the interior. So let's go into detail about the front end design here. What I love, first of all, is the overall styling. I do think it looks fantastic with these very, very slim headlights that we have right here. You also have the indicator light with a, just a, sing, a simple bar of LED down here. Nice chamfer going underneath the key graphics. You can see just how thin the headlight unit is. And then we have a very subtle LED wrapping all the way here in this very sharp motion. We have this wing up top, and this is what I'm talking about. If you just look at this area that we're looking at right now, reminds me a lot of the SF90 Stradale, which of course is not a bad thing. Up on the hood, we do have this V-shape for the lines that cuts into the grill. I do like that they have a connection to what's going on overall in the front end because it connects to this corner in the front end. Unfortunately, some states, as you know, in the US don't require a front license plate, but you're always going to get this static piece of rectangle in the front bumper, no matter what state your uh, Prius is getting delivered to. So what I want to change here in the front end is the lower section. Work a little bit with that and take some inspiration from the Supra's bumper and redesign that bumper itself to make it a lot more sporty in the lower section. I think that would look so cool. A couple of details in the lower section that I'm not a huge fan of is you see how this piece sticks into the body. I kind of just want to cut this off here if we just made a very, very quick redesign. I would have this be cut off and this just be simply uh, the body color and just have that be blue. Coming around to the side view, and this is where it gets very strange for me when we look at this uh, roof line, because the roof line, if you look at the A pillar here and how the roof line dips down, it goes almost starts here and then almost goes straight in a single line, straight into the front end. So this creates a very unique greenhouse. And usually what we learned in car design school was the highest point of the roof line should always be right where the, he the head of the driver is. And right now it feels like they moved that backwards a little bit. So the highest point now sits right here of the roof. Creates some very strange proportions looking at it from a side view, but it does have a very sporty styling since it is super raked in, in the side view. We also have the blacked out graphics here. We don't have the solar panels up top on the roof like you have on the more upscale trims, which is a pretty convenient feature because as soon as the car is parked on a sunny day like today, it's going to charge the car as it is parked. Now looking at these wheels here, I'm not sure what dimension these are. These look like probably 17 inch wheels. Let's see if we can find it here. Yes, they are 17 inch wheels and these look like proper, you know, EV wheels. I'm not a fan of the design of these wheels at all. And that is the main reason why I would step this up to the XSE trim. Because if you go with that, as I said, you're going to get the beautiful 19 inch. One line that I do love about this car is this lower section. You see how it cuts into the body right here? It looks very cool and carves out some of this volume in this section to create it more of a sporty upright design and having it have this forward motion. The side mirrors are also black, as you can see, gloss black with uh, some uh, matte black in the middle. Moving further back, you do have the door handle for the passenger seat located right here. So it's a pretty interesting uh, position for it. But what that does is it cleans up the overall design. Instead of having an ugly door handle right here, they decided to just have it be electric up here. Now coming around to the rear end, I also want to make some changes to the rear end design. I do think it's a pretty cool design. I think I've already made a small little touch up redesign of this car because I think these you see how it dips down very far here in the corner. I just wanted to push this upwards a little bit and not have it look like we used the liquify tool in Photoshop to just drag this all the way down here. I want to have a little bit more of a subtle corner here, maybe end it here in this area to not have it look so extreme in this area. But I do think it shows that Toyota still has a lot of fun designing cars for their, specifically this new Prius. It just looks overall, it's a huge improvement over the previous one. We do have a light bar stretching all across here in the middle. You do have the rear mounted camera right there. We don't have this glass panel that we used to seeing on old Priuses. That's not necessary anymore. You still have a decent rear view from the driver's seat. And of course, in addition to that, you also have the rear view camera. I think my favorite features of the exterior of the new Prius are going to be the graphics. I do love 
The light bar that we have here, I think it suits the Prius to have this light bar. I also like these uh, daytime run lights that we have in the corners with the LED indicator here. The blacked out Prius badge in the middle. You also have the parking sensors integrated here in the bumper and the lower diffuser, which we're obviously going to change. I'm going to put as I said, I'm going to take some inspiration from the Toyota Supra and just splash it on here. And of course, we're also going to have to change the wheels to make this look properly planted. Because even though you get the 19 inch wheels on the higher trims, they're still very, very thin. And that has to do with the rolling resistance, obviously. Even though these are the 17s, if you step it up to the 19s, you're still going to get 195 millimeter wide tires all around, which is very thin. It's almost bicycle tires. Now we pop up the hatch. You can see how much space we have back here. It is uh, pretty decent. I mean, this raked roof line is definitely going to take away some of the space that we have here. But you have a beautiful carpet here. You also have some AC vents, house outlets right there on the left side and an LED light on the right side. And if we open this up, you can see they do have all the charging stuff underneath here. So with that said, we talked about the exterior design. Now it's time to jump in and have a look at this interior because I have a lot to say about this interior. It's very unique in its styling. As you can see, the gauge cluster sits all the way up there and it's just a seven inch. Then you have the eight inch infotainment screen right there. You have the center, center armrest and console sitting very high up as well. So that means that you're sitting pretty low down, which is necessary because as I said, this A pillar dips down very close to your head, especially if you're tall like me around 6'1 six, six or 6'2. So let's jump in here and have a look at what's going on with this new 2024 Prius interior. Overall, I do like the Toyota went funky with this design. We have this nice shelf here with a different contrasting color. Soft touch material up on the dash itself. Eight inch, as I said, infotainment screen with the navigation built in. You also have Apple uh, CarPlay and Android Auto if you want to connect that. Further down, we do have these vents looking very traditional, super easy to adjust. The start button is located right here. Hazard button straight in the middle. And I love this bar, even though it's just a single zone climate control. We still have all the physical knobs and buttons to adjust these. Very easy to do on the go. And you don't have to fiddle around with any sort of uh, software just to change the climate control settings. But this being the base model, the funny thing here is we do have a heated steering wheel. You can see that right here with this button. We also have automatic high beams, but we don't have heated seats. And these are also manually adjustable, which I don't mind at all. Because if I buy a car, I'm only going to adjust the seats pretty much one time and then just keep it in that setting. That also saves some weight because we don't need to have electronic electric motors to move the seats back and forth to save some weight there. Further down, we do have a storage compartment or a little shelf here. This is not a wireless charger. It's just a place where you put whatever you want. Two USBs. We also have a cigarette outlet right there. Two cup holders. And this is what the key looks like. A pretty nice looking key because this Prius sits underneath this plastic cover, giving it some depth. You have these buttons, pretty much uh, the panic button and unlock and lock. So pretty basic. Moving further back. And this is also very interesting because it sits so high up, this gear selector. Now we have it in park. If you want to go into drive, you just move it to the left side and push it backwards. And now we are in drive, moving it up to reverse. It's going to just up like that and you have put it into reverse. You have the backup camera with zero trajectory lines. So you just have static lines for the backup camera and it doesn't have the highest resolution I've seen, but it's still eight inches and you're still going to see an Escalade behind you. Further back, we do have the drive mode. So we have four different drive modes. We have custom, we have sport, normal and eco. I like to just keep it in normal, which means that it's going to use all the EV range before it kicks in to the internal combustion engine. And you can, if you want to switch to the internal combustion engine, you just use these buttons right here. So if you just want to have auto, you push this button. If you want to fire up the internal combustion engine, you hold this button right here. Traction control on and off and the parking brake located in this area as well. On the side here, you do have a slot to put your phone and you can also fold up the armrest, which is pretty thin, but pretty big for this type of vehicle. Two USB slots right there. So let's fold this back down and let's have a look at these seats. So cloth seats for the base model. And I do think it, they look really good and they're very comfortable. We do have some red accent color and stitching here, similar to the red that comes back in the interior over here. 
No complaints at all about the seats. Up top, we don't have a sunroof and we also don't have the, the solar panels up top and this is totally fine for me. Now, the thing about this though, the gauge cluster, let's talk about the gauge cluster before we talk about the steering wheel here. It sits all the way up here. So when I'm in my driving position and specifically if I hold my hand like this, which I usually do, sometimes when I'm not driving, I just want to chill out and I have my hands up top, I can't see any of the gauge cluster. It's completely blocked and if I don't have my hand there, it's still blocked by the top part of the steering wheel. I'm not sure why Toyota decided to go with this styling. It looks very cool and very unique, futuristic to have sort of the dash within these beautiful chamfers here that goes around it. But when it comes to functionality, it doesn't really work out for me at least. You can adjust the steering wheel up and down, but it's still not going to help my driving position because this is how I want to have the steering wheel when I'm driving. And if I have it in my preferred location is going to cover up the gauge cluster. One other detail, if you hold your hand like this and I was driving, you're going to cover up this face recognition sensors that we have here. And then it's going to start yelling at you on the gauge cluster to sit up that it can't see my face. So I always turn off pretty much every single safety feature in new cars today. And this has a bunch of them, lane departure assist, parking sensors, this face recognition stuff. So it has a lot of standard safety features, but none that I really care about. It also has this uh, traffic crossing warning. So if you have cars moving in front of you, I can still use my eyes to see that. Now looking at the steering wheel though, I do like this design of the steering wheel. First of all, it's very small. So look at the radius of this thing. It's also leather wrapped with the same red stitching coming back in the interior. And on the left side, you have all the controls to figure out how you want to adjust your uh, safety features up top. So you can turn everything off here if you want to do that. And I think I'm actually going to do that right now. You also have the volume button right here and the uh, voice command in the middle. You do have the Toyota logo looking nice. Look at how steep this angle is for the steering wheel. On the right side, we do have the cruise control settings and also the settings for the radio down here. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, we do have another vent and the same beautiful accent color down here. The buttons for the heated steering wheel and the heated rear window, the automatic uh, high beams. So with that said, let's jump into the rear seats because I haven't been in the rear seats yet. So we're going to see if I can fit behind my own driving position. So of course the door handle sits up here. Open it up. Overview of the rear seats looking pretty basic. It feels very spacious back here specifically for the uh, for the legs. The headroom is a completely different story though because as I said this roof line has this sports car like roof line and you can see that if I sit upright I'm going to hit my hat on to the roof. So it's not very comfortable back here. If you're over six feet, I would say leg room is fine, but headroom is not that great. Further down, you do have two more USBs. You also have a house outlet right here. Nice if you want to plug in a vacuum or something like that. And if we fold down the center armrest, you are going to find yourself two cup holders right here in the middle. taking the 2024 uh, Toyota Prius for a drive. I'm in all EV mode right now and it is pretty quick in just EV mode. I mean you can it, it, it's a lot slower of course just EV than if you were to have the internal combustion engine popped in but since it is EV we have the instant torque it makes it feel more powerful than it actually is. But let's pop it in to um, Let's fire up, wake up this internal combustion engine and uh, let's see what this can do in these twisty, twisties here. And it, it is so much quicker when you have the, uh, the engine turned on. It's actually a very fun car to drive this because it sits low and it also looks very good. And I feel like you're being hugged by this interior thanks to this raked, super raked roof line that we have and looking at the windshield I mean if you want to talk about raked windshields this is one of the you know steepest angle windshields I think I've ever seen 
But that also comes with a few negatives. First of all, the visibility out here. This sits right where I'm looking to the side. So I have to keep moving my head back and forth just to kind of go around this big A pillar. And if you're taller than me, it's gonna feel like you have the, uh, the roof right sitting right on your forehead because of this side view that we talked about where the highest point of the roof is not where the driver has his head. It's way back almost over the passenger seat. One thing I cannot get over though is, is this uh, gauge cluster. I am not a fan of this gauge cluster at all. I like, as I said, the design looks cool, but when it comes to functionality, I can only see half of it now. So I have to do this to see what, what speed I'm actually going if I, if I wanna have a clear vis, uh, view of the gauge cluster. It just sits in the completely wrong space and it doesn't matter, as I said, how much you adjust the steering wheel. It's still going to, either your hand is going, now, now it's completely covered when I have my hand up here, which is not good at all, obviously, or if I move my hand down here, now half of it is still covered by the top part of the steering wheel. So that is something that I wish they would have changed and thought about more when it comes to the interior design of this car. But let's do this. Let's pop it into sport and let's see how that switches everything up. Oh yeah. So the sport setting is definitely a massive change, uh, specifically when it comes to the throttle response compared to uh, any other drive modes. Now it almost, it almost feels like a small little sports car, this Prius. The only thing that I would like to change here for the exterior design is obviously going to be the, uh, the brakes feel fine too. They're very smooth. The, the wheels, we need to switch out these wheels, put some fatter wheels on there. Uh, I know it's going to impact the range, but if I was to buy a Prius, the overall exterior design, looks still so sporty that it just doesn't make sense to have this bicycle tires on. It just completely ruins everything else about this design. And since it drives this well, I also want it to look good. Oh yeah, <laughs> little Prius. They really worked on this. It's actually a very fun car to drive. I have to give Toyota credit for the driving ability of this thing. So which spec would I personally choose for the Prius? I think the, the premium starts at around $40,000, so it's about 6,000 more than this, which is not really a lot for the, the styling additional feature that you get, and also some, in, uh, some f uh, features in the interior. But I would probably just go with this base model because we still have this fantastic drivetrain and 220 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. And what I would do is buy this uh, base model. And then, as you know, the only thing I would do is just switch out the wheels and that would be my Prius. I would probably save a couple of grand doing that myself instead of having the 19s from factory. Yeah, th this handles really great. It handles fantastic. Overall, well done, Toyota, refreshing the uh, Prius, not just when it comes to the styling, specifically the exterior. There are a couple of things they should have done better with the interiors, more, more so the gauge cluster is what I'm talking about and good job on the drivability of this new Prius. It literally feels like a completely different car from the old Priuses.